Ladies and gents, sexy people, it is Dave, it is Duncan, back from Metal Epidemic for another album review. What is up? <laughs> well, let's do it like this. Okay then, Dave thinks he's fucking Bruce Buffer in the UFC, <laughs> man, honestly. Here's what you get this time. <laughs> it's time, Duncan. Um, so. <laughs> Coming in at 34 minutes in length. <laughs> <laughs> the new album. From German noisemakers. German? Park and oh. Riot. <laughs> I uh, never read the press statement, so this is German. German. Fucking uh, hell, man. The band's new album, Wise Words from Well Fed Mouths, will be released on March 1st via This Charming Man Records. Oh, you can't say it like that. Oh, you can't? No, you have to sing it. <laughs> no, I don't have to sing it. Yes, you do. <laughs> And then you have to go, no, huh? <laughs> The Smiths? Oh, oh come um, on. There's a wee bit Morrissey in everyone. Shut your hole. Um, did, a so, lot, did a power of shagging in these. <laughs> <laughs> so, Duncan. Um, Dave. You know there's always a reason I pick an album for review. You know. Uh, well, I don't know. There's you do know there's always a reason I pick I do, album actually. <laughs> I, I never know the reason. But I know there's a motive. Well, let's put it this way. I know that you're motivated to pick albums mm. with a story that can be weaved. Yes, Duncan. You like to tell stories, Dave. Tell a story. I like a wee story. Uh, one of my favourite reasons right now for picking an album for review is when a band are a duo, Duncan. Uh, you do, like... I... The Love last me. five years have taught me that we wasted a lot of time trying to appease other musicians, and we should just yeah. went as a duo for a long time. Granted, that duo would have been predominantly you doing everything, <laughs> but I would have sold that shit. <laughs> yeah, you would have. You would have added that sex appeal, definitely. Yeah. Um, this duo are from Leipzig. Um, they have an EP from 2020, but this is their debut album. Which Which thing's was, not in America, that's in Germany, Dave. That's in Germany, it is, Duncan. Yeah. Um, the album was mixed and mastered by Magnus Limburg of Cult of Luna. <laughs> How the fuck did they do that? <laughs> A sacrifice to Satan, and that's how they did it. Technology, Duncan. Technology. Okay. This album. Yeah, I can see it. I'm feeling the same. Fuck me, Duncan. This, this one's this one's a this one gives you perky tits. You know what I mean? You're just like flick the nipples just to get the fucking engine gone. Hard. Yeah. Uh, ten tracks, almost thirty five minutes in length, and a fucking ball of raw fucking energy, <laughs> Duncan. <sighs> right, stylistically. Oh, we're just rhyming are... off things, do it, Dave. <laughs> do it. These guys, you've got. A bit of fucking metallic hardcore in there. A bit of fucking sludge in there. A bit of post-hardcore in there at times as well. And there's even that, even some blackened elements getting thrown into the mix as well. We are going four fingers deep on this review, <laughs> ladies and gents. That is more than I thought. I thought it was going to go maybe two or three. Oh, but no. I'm just going to say this is going to be painful. Right. <laughs> I'm going all in. Um, I... Yeah, I kind of loved this from the get go, but I loved, I loved how unpredictable this was. Mm. There is nothing more rewarding than an album that has you wondering what the fuck is going to come next from this band, and that uh, this album has that feeling because the first two songs I was like, all right, okay, settle myself in here. I know what's coming on the rest of this album, and I'm all fucking good with it. Lungs out, the opening track. Ha, comes it's a great firing name in. for an opening track. Oh, lungs are out. It's it had the kind of like the kind of discordance of a like poison the well, yeah. um, where they've they've kind of kind of merged these thick, really thick, heavy grooves, but with this like really angular, dissonant, you know, kind of disjointed. Um, I love songs that just start with a vocalist and a drummer. Like, you know, uh, like, drummer's just fucking hitting and the vocalist is just screaming. They're like, we don't yeah. need any other... Oh, we actually do need a guitar, but you're just going to wait for it every second. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's very jagged, very erratic, 
but it has these moments during the track where you're just you're just like oh you the disgusted face is on you're just like when those heavy parts drop it's so satisfying um it's quite a it's quite a kind of hardcore laden mm -hmm. um kind of track but it's got a lot of the guitar work reminded me of like that kind of like mid to late 90s metalcore scene that kind of like ferret records kind of type era yes um <laughs> and then the the following track clouds continues with that same kind of it's got a kind of mathy kind of streaked it very very disjointed rhythms but the slower parts mm -hmm. on this i was like waves of like early Wilhaven on this one i was like mm -hmm. oh yes give me more give me more um it is heavy as balls um but there was also like there was a like a, a small like flicker of like melody um a little bit in the vocals and a little touch in the guitar and i was like all oh, right that's interesting but that was just just creaking the door it open was, it was easing you in I'm saying, it was Dave, listen, exactly listen, the door's a wee bit ajar yeah look inside you want to come in all right well let me just open the door a wee bit it more. did it Here opened the door in. for the next mammoth on the album which was bolt cutters <laughs> or as i like to call it i love at the drive-in I yes. wish you could just give me a like a more like aggressive version of that and hundred percent in the face. I was gonna say exactly yeah. that. Um it's it's much more of a kind of post hardcore vibe on this one. Um, much quicker in tempo. Um and it, but it felt like this track was a, a little bit more kind of structured, mm -hmm. um, slightly less kind of erratic. Um but I, I loved that this one had a bit more of a kind of emotional streak to it. Um and the energy I totally agree. It reminded me of At The Driving. Um, killer switch of tone in the album I did not yeah. see coming. Um, and the ending is just fucking colossal. Like, just amazing ending. Um, and it just kind of, when that track finished, I was like, right, I, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know what's coming next because that just, like, was an absolute curveball. And the curveballs just keep coming um, because you're just like, <laughs> next one is, like, Revolution. Very short, 2 minutes 45. Um but this one's like catchy as fuck. Like comes with a bit of melody. There's a big chant along chorus where like both members are, are contributing vocals. Cracking hook that's in it. Um, but like as this was going on, I was like the ordering of this album was fucking awesome. Like they've hit you with two tracks right out the <laughs> gate. That you're just like, oh, that's amazing. And then they're like, hold on a minute though, there's more. There's yeah, more. And then you start going, to... like track five is like the you know, is track five is the ultimate of curveballs. Like yeah. I mean. It is, a, it, is, it is a fucking third testicle. It's unexpected, <laughs> but, I mean, we'll roll with it. Yeah, uh, Cure. Um, just, yeah, it sits in the, the middle of the album um, and is just completely stripped back, like, vocals, some synths. And I was like, what the, the fuck is going on here? Like, I know, but I was also thinking, this is, like, end of part one end of side A of the vinyl You've got that vinyl mentality Dave it's in, it's in there. It's 2024 <laughs> the year of the vinyl brain <laughs> for like this this vinyl thing what a creation man um, <laughs> like, I've discovered this new thing ladies and gents I think it's going to be huge vinyl plastic discs that play music <laughs> it's mind blowing um, yeah like and, and by the way the vinyl is sexy as fuck. Um, bright red to go with the artwork. I like or, it. I, I like it. I missed this, the beginning. I thought you were just saying, in general, vinyl is sexy as right, fuck. No. And I'm like, we no. get it, Dave. The, <laughs> the vinyl, this vinyl is, is sexy People as that own vinyl add three inches to their cock size. <laughs> um, yeah, so the first half of the album, I was like, this is fucking awesome. This is fucking awesome i'm loving this and then the first part of like the second half of the album i was like okay this is this is a little bit different this is it, it took me the first kind of two tracks of that second half track six and seven took me a few listens to kind of kind of get the into longest songs on the album yeah as um, well. it, so it wasn't like a that length. yeah it wasn't like an instant spark with those tracks um they're a little bit less uh, kind of riff driven it feels like they've they, they lean heavier on the post hardcore side of things it feels a bit a little bit more emotional and vocally especially um it's still quite chaotic and quite jarring but not quite as like punishingly heavy um as the album goes on however those heavy parts then start to kind of feed in again um and like and i was like kind of back into the album after that the last track seeds is oh what Ooh. a closer what a closing track um 
great riffs, um, killer vocal hooks. There's there's even there's a cheeky wee cowbell in there, and it just happens once, and I'm just like, whoa, what, what's going on? That was fucking cowbell. Cowbell. Hey, just I felt like it was just for me to be honest, but just so. um, yeah, um, yeah, loved it. I thought it was a really really fucking good album. The the two tracks track six and seven were probably my least favorite, but they just they took me a little bit kind of longer to get into, um, and. After I heard them kind of three or four times, I started to kind of get into them more. Um, yeah, I think Blueprints was cool. Um, it's only like 48 seconds long. Um, and it it's felt like... strumming an acoustic guitar, so... Yeah, I, I, when I heard that, it was like... It felt like another kind of transitional part of the album mm-hmm. into the kind of closing two tracks. But it reminded me of uh, Tear From The Red era Poison The Well. Um, Fuck's sake, yeah. They have little like sections where it's just like a guy singing and like kind of yeah. clean guitars or like not even plugged in it's just like a, an electric guitar but he's just strumming strings and um, it kind of reminded him of that a little bit um yeah that was really cool production of the album fuck's sake my Fuck god sake. earthy it's savage the guitars have just got crushing weight to them it's um, the ferret record sound yeah like, absolutely I literally I'm, I'm so glad you met like ferret records had a sound like you bought a re- like, if that if that stamp Mm. was on an album artwork you, you knew you were getting something but you were just going to be like this all the way yeah. through it <laughs> and that's kind of this yeah absolutely it's like licking a battery <laughs> you know what I mean you kind of want to do it and you're going to do it but you also know that afterwards your tongue's going to be numb for a wee yeah. while yeah yeah I, I love the sound of this album the even the the clean parts they put in they really shine through on this um but i, I loved how how rough it sounded like there's no like we're not going to chop off any unwanted mm. notes or we're not we're going to kill that feedback we're just going to let it all fucking happen you, there's even a point where you can hear the metronome bleeping at the end of one of the tracks i love that <laughs> as well um it's just it's got character to it i really like that um it's also got a real like live kind of energy to mm-hmm. it um i don't know how much of this they recorded like live together as a duo but i, I suspect probably a lot of it because you can feel there's like a chemistry to it uh, coming across in it um i watched if you've got a chance watch some live footage of these guys they are fucking insane live oh i'll be all over that the, yeah. the drummer is nuts like there's a, there's a video i watched i think they posted it on instagram and he's literally scaling the walls he's up on the on the like like scaffolding up the side of the building he's climbing up the walls fucking running a bit before and then he comes back to the kit and then starts playing like they are for a duo i i i thought i was going a different way i thought you were like he was like a one-man band climbing up the thing but still <laughs> playing the fucking, <laughs> fucking here we go here we go here we go <laughs> um yeah I'd, I'd love to see this in person um because it like on watching it on on youtube and on instagram it looked fucking amazing uh yeah really enjoyed the album really good um as i said there was there was a couple of tracks that i was unsure of at first it just took me a few listens to get into it, but then afterwards i was like when i first heard um blood has been shed spirals there was a there was a couple of kind of more experimental tracks on that album that took me a few listens to get into it but then when I went back to it, those tracks then worked really well with what's round about it. And I felt like this was a kind of similar kind of uh, experience um, mm. as, a, as a listening to, to this album. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, what about yourself? What do you think? Oh yeah, this is fucking straight up fire. Um, yeah. I, I don't know, I like, there's some people out there that have a lean, right? And that's sure. the lean, that's a lean, not a lean. All right, yeah. Some people have an elite. This is my wife, elite. <laughs> um, there are people out there that have a lean, right? And they, yeah. they stick to that. You know, I'm the hardcore guy. I'm the death metal guy. I'm the new metal guy. I'm the fucking prog guy. I realized as I grow older and older, mm. um, as time passes, that like, I never had a lean. I just, I, I know what I like, right? Sure. But it's never confined to one thing, and that's been cross genres. That's even out with metal, um, whether it's like dance, fucking folk, jazz, blues, whatever it is. Mm. Um, I have a lean. I, I almost can pick like a handful of bands in pretty much any genre except country music, which I fucking hate. <laughs> um, but I could pick a handful of bands. I could be like, all right, like I. That's that's what I. I like this genre because of this, right? 
it's the same with metal. There'll mm. be people out there that go, well, he listens to this, he listens to that. Same with you, like, oh, he's hardcore Dave because that's not hardcore. Oh, he's death metal, you know, that's death metal. But I've went through a lot of phases in my time listening to alternative and heavy music. And there are bands nowadays that are, because we've lived as long as we have, which isn't really that old, but let's make ourselves feel old, um, that are kind of harking back to sins now. Mm. I keep mentioning the 20-year itch because it's prominent, and the older you get, the more bands circle back around to in or around the 20-year period before. So if you were jumping back, it'd be 2004, but actually if you go a couple of years before that, you're in prime Ferret music. Right? Mm. Ferret Records is pivotal for me like ferret records is when i transition from listening to new metal mm. to right i don't know what i listen to now i don't i i, I hear this emo stuff it's kind of cool but it means a lot of makeup and i can't be bothered putting it on <laughs> so what else do we have and I, i'm kind of moving away from roadrunner because i've done the roadrunner thing where do i go next and there was two labels that kind of like stood out one was Trust Kill, and you got all your fucking hardcore and metalcore stuff on that. And the other one was Ferret. And Ferret was the dangerous one of the two, because Ferret was just full of volatile bands that just fucking flung everything in. And yeah. you could go from the most kind of spastic, syncopated, discordant, ragey, almost incoherent, angry shit you've ever heard through to like uh like an every time i die where you were getting things like oh this is catchy it's rocky but it's got a fucking edge mm. and that's kind of where park and riots it like i picked up like huge I, I picked up bits of really early every time i die specifically in the vocals it sits on that cusp of this guy's voice is almost going to crack but he's mm. somehow holding it together yeah um it is just volatile in the best possible way but this band are so fucking smart that on the first listen, I was like, this could all fall apart in any, you know, any, like, in the next riff, this could just fucking fall apart like a, like a fucking, a, a house of cards where someone's mm. pulled one out and you're like, oh, what are we doing here? Or, mm. Like a bad game of Jenga when you've mm. had a few. <laughs> um, like, it always felt volatile on that first listen. On the second listen, the greatest gift that, Park plus Riot or Park and Riot um, give you is that actually it's a deception. Mm. This band are in control all the way right through. Yeah. The deception is that it could come off the it could come off the rails at any point, mm. but it's never gonna. Yeah. And they managed to maintain that so well throughout the runtime. This is the very definition of an album. Listen for me. I know you were saying that tracks six and seven maybe took you a bit of time to acclimate to and maybe still aren't your favourite things in here not even looking at this with vinyl glasses <laughs> Dave now has um, I actually see the the smartness in putting those songs where they are and what they actually deliver and what it gives to the end of the album it's just incredibly well structured like you said it's somewhere between the 34-35 minutes in length but they throw everything at you uh, but it never feels reckless either. It's like really well conditioned and really bore out. Mm. The vocals in this are fucking so good, man. So good. It's that kind of on the edge, bear your soul kind of hardcore, screamy vocals. But then, like you mentioned before, they can go tonal on like a track like Revolution where you're like, I could sing this. Mm. <laughs> I could sing this in the car with my kids and no one would cry. <laughs> um, Cure is a revelation, by the mm. way. Like, that is so smartly placed. It's right smack dab in the middle and it resets the tone for what you get in the back half. The guitar work is impressive. It's jangly. It throws a ton of things in there without necessarily feeling like a hodgepodge. It really does pay to its influences. Mm. The drum work is very impressive. The production is awesome. Like, yeah. this is like... See if someone had said, oh, you know, uh, the the new twit... Oh, the, the, fucking debut Roadrunner 12 Tribes album has been remastered here, it's here mm. and I listened to it, wouldn't be too <clears> far <throat> off this, like if Ross Robinson was going through his back catalogue and was <laughs> like that I'm going to remaster that every time uh, not every time I die um, a fucking At The Driving album, here it's here mm. um, I would feel this, it kind of feels like a cleaned up version of an older sound without compromising any of those elements mm -hmm. like you see, you feel like these two guys are in a room <laughs> Yeah. And like just looking at each other and going, let's fucking keep going, let's keep doing it. It has a raw, infectious energy, which is 
addictive to listen to and it's very very easy to listen to mm. at the same time you can spin this one like on a loop and feel kind of good about yourself for doing it with all the rage and anger that it has and all the angles it's very 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 jaggy mm. sounding record but I kind of love it never in a million years had you asked me to point on a map where this band was from was I ever going to Europe this to me was always America <laughs> mm. Uh, it was going to be one of the East Coast states. It wasn't going to be a West Coast state by any stretch of the imagination. So that kind of blows my mind. I think mm. they've they've emulated, captured, and authentically sound of a five year period in in America on the East Coast. It's so bizarre. It's fucking awesome though. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I dug this one a lot. Nice. Uh, so, uh, finally, um, scores for wise words from well-fed mouths. Um, yeah, these guys are 100% on my watch list now. Um, didn't ha- Never heard of them before, but this album has definitely put them on my map. Um, they they kind of possess all the, the traits and character that I would look for in a kind of chaotic, hardcore band. Um, and for a debut, it's like, what? This is fucking ridiculous um, for a debut I mean, album um that the the ideas on this are just outstanding um really really enjoyed it um and production wise is fucking spot on really really the, actually i never mentioned it but the drummer is an absolute beast like he absolutely <laughs> tears around that kit for 35 minutes um yeah I, i'd love to see this live absolutely love to see this live um i'm going 4.5 in this uh, i can see myself coming back to this a lot uh duncan what are you thinking right there with you this is like this is this is my sexy wheelhouse i i think this is fucking great yeah and it's one of those ones where i'm kind of loving this now we're getting a lot of this stuff mm. right now of i would imagine clearly kids that grew up in uh, in a household where their parents were spinning good shit and they're and they're bringing it mm. and uh yeah this one band has a lot going for it this is an exciting band this is one of these ones where it's good to get in on the ground floor on the first album because yep. fuck knows where we're going after this like yourself i kind of hope that the the distance from germany from mm. Leipzig to glasgow ain't that far so yep. get over here and sell us your sexy wares <laughs> nice uh, uh park and riot uh wise Ooh. words from well-fed mouths um out on March 1st on this Charming Man Records. Link below the band. Not singing it. And links to the pre-order <laughs> right below. Um, get in on the ground floor with these guys. And people, get in on the ground floor on this vinyl thing, by the way. That's just, that is going to uh, explode. Dave, I would go out tonight, but I haven't got a stitch to wear. <laughs> um, that is the review. <laughs> uh, thank you for checking it out. Uh, We'll be back with another review very soon, but until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone.